Welcome back to Quick Bits. In the week of May 29th to June 2nd, I talked about the reveal of the burn after reading letter that Roberta Laundry wrote to her son, Brian Laundry, that was then turned over in discovery to Gabby Petito's parents and about Alec Murdaugh being indicted on 22 counts in a 28 page indictment. What his lawyer said about it, which is new info, because that came out after I did the podcast last week. So we've got some new info for you and the quick bits roundup of those two topics. And then, well, I traveled, so there was only one live stream this week, so it should be pretty quick to catch up on, which is great. I'm legal analyst Emily D. Baker. This is the Quick Bits, where I break down just the main points of the pop culture and entertainment cases I'm currently covering on YouTube and the Emily Show podcast. Let's get into it. We're starting right in with the burn after reading letter that has now been turned over in discovery to the Petito parents and made public in the media. Now, this is part of the ongoing civil litigation in Florida, wherein Gabby Petito's parents have sued Brian Laundrie's parents for intentional infliction of emotional distress. This civil case is going through the process. There is still an outstanding ruling on two motions to dismiss. I will cover that when that ruling comes down from the court. It was taken under advisement and the court will issue a written ruling at some period in the future. But this letter was the subject of much interest because the lawyer for the Petitos released, well, snippets of the letter in the motion asking for the letter. Does this mean this letter will come in in trial? Not necessarily. We will still get to motions in limine and things like that if this case goes to trial down the road. What this means for now is that it is in their possession and discovery and can come in at trial. The argument from the you know, Gabby Petito's parents will be that this letter shows that at the time or at a time, Roberta Laundry was offering aid to her son. The Laundry family attorney is going to argue, look, this letter is undated. Roberta Laundry says that she wrote it to Brian Laundry before he went on the road trip. And this letter is not relevant to the intentional infliction of emotional distress, shouldn't come in at trial at all. And those arguments will be made in pretrial motions down the road again after we see, I think, motions for summary judgment, which is kind of the next phase after this all goes to depositions. So there's a lot left to happen in this civil case. One thing I want to make clear about the letter, and we're going to go over it together so you don't have to go to the long form content unless you want to for the breakdown of the letter, but this letter, it's still unclear where it was recovered. I have seen mixed reports from two different attorneys. It's been said that it was recovered when Brian Laundrie's remains and possessions were found in his waterproof bag, dry bag inside his backpack, but it looks too unblemished to me. Um, Stephen Bertolino said that the FBI recovered it before they found Brian Laundrie's remains and possessions. This letter is, well, what we have released is photocopies of the letter and it isn't wrinkled. It's not dirty. It's the edges aren't even bent. So everything else in that backpack was in a much worse state. So I tend to think this was probably found before that, but we don't know for sure because there are still conflicting reports on when this letter was found. But we do know that it was in the possession of the FBI and a copy was given to Stephen Bertolino, the attorney at the time for the laundries. So this is the cover of the letter. It looks like the letter is just a piece of paper folded over from everything. The front has a bird and then says, remember. And then on the other side, it says Brian Christopher Laundry, And then in parentheses, burn after reading. Getting to the content of the letter, it says, I just want you to remember, I will always love you. And I know you will always love me. You are my boy. Nothing can make me stop loving you. Nothing will or could ever divide us. No matter what we do or where we go or what we say, we will always love each other. If you're in jail, I will bake a cake with a file in it. If you need to dispose of a body, I will. And then it says bring, but that's crossed out with a line. And then it says show up with a shovel and garbage bags. Yes, it does. Yes, that's exactly what it says. It says, if you need to dispose of a body, I will show up with a shovel and garbage bags. If you fly to the moon, I will be watching the skies for your reentry. If you say you hate my guts, I will get new guts. 
Remember that love is a verb, not a noun. It's not a thing. It's not words. It is actions. Watch people's actions to know if they love you, not their words. Quote, therefore, I am certain that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor the ruling spirits, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers from above, nor powers from below, nothing in the entire created world can separate our love. Neither hostile powers, nor messages of heaven, nor monarchs of earth, nothing has the power to separate us, end quote. And then it says Romans 8, 38, extended version. And then it goes on in parentheses to say, nothing can separate us, not hatred, not hunger, not homelessness, not threats, not even sin, not the thinkable or unthinkable can get between us, end parentheses. And then it says, not time, not miles, and miles, and miles. It is not signed by Roberta Laundrie, though in her affidavit to court, she said that she wrote this. There are those who think this was written and given to Brian Laundrie as he was getting in, getting ready to go on the run after he killed Gabby Petito. The lines about not time, not miles and miles, the unthinkable, burying a body, all of that lending that way. But because this is undated, if this goes to trial and if this letter comes in, which I think it can, then it will be for the jury to decide. They're the finder of fact. Was this written as Roberta Laundry was telling Brian what to consider as he was going on the run? Or is this a very odd coincidence that she wrote this letter before they went on the trip? In her affidavit, she said that Brian Laundry and her were fighting before he and Gabby Petito went on their extended uh, van life trip. I wonder what they were fighting about. Were they fighting about his relationship with Gabby Petito? Were they fighting about the engagement? Um, is that why she said, you know, watch people's actions for love? What does this letter really mean? And what do you think it means? Is this just a horribly unfortunate coincidence that she's talking about being in jail and burying a body and miles and miles and miles separating her son and her? I would love to know your thoughts on it. We saw the thoughts on the live stream. If you want to go see those, it is over on my extended content channel, The Emily D. Baker, and you can see the live chat and see what everybody thought about that. I have a lot of thoughts. But it's the quick bits, so we're going to keep moving. On the Emily Show podcast this week, I talked about the 22-count federal indictment for Alec Murdaugh that laid out not only what was going on with Fake Forge, but the way in which he was stealing from various clients, all things really that we already knew, with some pieces of new information like Bank of America closed the Fake Forge account, and then a new Fake Forge account was opened and things like that. But the feds are coming for Alec Murdaugh over similar charges that the state has put out. And we've seen the state already say that they are going to continue prosecuting the financial crimes. Remember, Alec Murdaugh talked largely about those financial crimes at trial, admitted to quite a lot of them at trial. But on May 31st, he did go into federal court and plead not guilty. I'm not surprised by that at all. There is no plea agreement in, you know, on paper yet for him. But his attorneys did issue a statement after that arraignment and said, quote, Alec has been cooperating with the United States Attorney's Office and federal agencies in their investigation of a broad range of activities. Makes me wonder what about the tax activities. It goes on to say, we anticipate that the charges brought today will be quickly resolved without a trial. Uh, that is lawyers speak for we're working on a plea deal and we're working on a plea deal that will settle, settle all the federal charges. I also cover the fact that Alec Murdaugh's partner in crime, Corey Fleming, pled guilty to one count in a plea deal that was negotiated before the information was filed. Alec Murdaugh was indicted, which means a grand jury heard the charges. Corey Fleming had an information filed, which means the government just filed the charges without a uh, grand jury or another type of probable cause hearing before that. That plea deal was arranged before the information was filed, so it was a negotiated for charge that it was just the one charge. They laid out quite a lot of activity from Corey Fleming, but they also said very clearly that he did not know all of Alec's scheme and plan. So it seems that Corey Fleming got a pretty good deal. Also part of Corey Fleming's deal, because he has lots of other state-level charges pending, was that he would testify truthfully at any type of hearing or trial as needed or grand jury, and that he would be able to serve any time, whether the charges were state or federal, in federal prison. And it seems that that was exactly what Corey Fleming wanted. The experience 
for him in federal prison, especially seeing that all of the charges against him are financial and fraud related crimes, is going to be a much different experience than in state prison. So it seems that that was the big goal and just the one federal charge on this, which means when he is sentenced, he is not sentenced yet. Uh, the amount of time he might get could be pretty low on that one count, and then he would get to spend any state time also in federal custody, even if it exceeds the amount of time he gets federally. So it seems that Corey Fleming took a deal to tell the feds everything he knows about what Alec Murdoch and others are up to. Do I think we'll still see more federal charges? Yes. Do I think we're at the end of all the charges against Alec Murdoch? No. Do I think Alec Murdoch is going to try to get himself out of state prison into federal prison? Maybe, but I don't think that's going to happen in quite the same way because of those murder convictions. And with that, those are just the quick bits. That's everything I covered this week in my long form content. Let me know if you find this format helpful. And as always, this podcast has been recorded using StreamYard, which I use for both my pre-recorded content like this and my live streams. So if you are creating content, you need to check it out. All my links are down below. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being a honored. I will see you live streaming this week and I will see you in the next one. For deep dives into the stories that I covered here, you can find them on my YouTube channel at The Emily D. Baker and The Emily Show Podcast. I stream every Tuesday and Thursday. The podcast goes live on Wednesdays. And if you want more Law Nerd community, come join us at lawnerdsunite.com.